place in the UK where you go to meet people. Uh, you can do business here, you can network with your peers, and you can go to some talks as well. And there are awards, and there's a lovely sunny beach out there. It's a lovely time of the year to come here. I think it's also great to have a, a focus for the year. So we're all very busy making computer games, so sometimes it's difficult to talk to people and actually get information. And so having a sort of focused event to talk to your peers, especially if you're in sort of startup mode or you're just starting in the industry, it's actually quite good to come here, listen to us grizzled old veterans, give our war stories, learn a little bit, learn who's good, learn who's bad, uh, and also sort of understand that you're not alone in the industry. What are our plans for rebellion? I'm um, not sure. Did we write them down sometime? Um, yeah, we don't really do business plans, do no, we? No. Um, what do we want to do at rebellion? Do fun, cool stuff. That's really what, what we're about. Um, we're about bringing stories, adventures, games to people throughout the world. Um, and if that means we have to grow a number of staff, yeah, sure, we'll do that. Um, we don't just do games, we're a bit different to a lot of other game developers, publishers in the UK. We do games, we do books, we do comics, uh, we're doing TV and film as well, so we do kind of quite a lot of stuff. Um, and all of those require different skills that we're learning and uh, developing as we go along. It's, it's all about content creation, um, and the reason Rebellion exists is so that we can do cool things and create cool content. So uh, the future, hopefully, is more cool stuff probably means more people, probably means more infrastructure as well, more facilities. We just bought 250,000 square foot of film studio, so that's kind of exciting. We're working on a, a big movie with Duncan Jones called Rogue Trooper, based on one of our own intellectual properties. We've got our first feature film that we're fully funding going into production, uh, it, literally principal photography in two weeks time, filming uh, in our studios and on location in London and Ipswich, based on one of our books called Schools Out. Uh, so it's called Schools Out Forever. It's about an apocalyptic boys' public school, uh, so it should be quite fun. Uh, and uh, the, the future is making stuff, making cool things for, to entertain people. It's about finding the essence of a story. I mean, we actually, for, for example, have done game adaptations of, of movies, so Aliens vs Predator is one specific example. Uh, we've done some Star Wars games, but it's about what is the essence? You know, in, in our case, it's like, what's the essence of, of the Aliens movies? What's the essence of the Alien? What's the essence of Predators and the Marines? And bringing those into a game setting. We're not trying to make an interactive movie, we're making a game, and it's very different. And you just need to focus on what those things are. I think one of the, the problems people have with video games becoming movies is they, they, they don't dissociate themselves enough from the core product and then rebuild it. You've got to break, you've got to break it down to its core essence and then build a good story. Movies are about good story and about character and about interpersonal relationships. The most visually exciting movie with a rubbish story isn't a good movie. You, you, ultimately you need a good story and that will carry a movie through. In a lot of cases, I think the actual narrative thread, the story, is secondary to the fact that it's a link to a computer game, uh, which is a great shame because computer games are bigger than movies. Uh, computer games are bigger than television. They're, they're, we're a bigger industry. So we should be able to work well together. But I think one of the challenges is that lots of people in the film industry are not very familiar with computer games in the way that perhaps people in the computer games industry are familiar with movies. And I think there are natural tensions there. So I think they, they've got it wrong. We've got it wrong, if you like, because we're in that industry now. We've got it wrong uh, as an industry more than we've got it right. But that doesn't mean it can't be got right. I mean, just look at the rise of comic-based movies. Basically, the movie industry is comics now, which is awe-inspiring because comics 10 years ago 20 years ago were, were nowhere in, in movies and now they're everywhere. So it could be the same for, uh, for computer games soon. Uh, I actually think it's going to be easier, the next generation, it's going to be a little bit easier to get onto because really you can see where they're going to go. The next generation is really just, it's, it's the more of the same. But in the past, you know, it was about who could come up with this clever hardware. But now it's really, it's NVIDIA, it's AMD. Uh, it's Intel or AMD um, for the CPUs, say, and NVIDIA and AMD for the graphics. Uh, they're really PCs in a box. But there's some secret sources and other things, and that's, that'll be the, the challenge. It makes it good for us because it means we can concentrate more on the games and getting them 
brilliant, instead of, can we just get our game running on the new hardware? Yeah, there's always a challenge. New, new hardware is always incredibly exciting, but potentially very challenging as well, because you have to unlearn things. But well, this generation appears we don't have to unlearn anything. We can just build on what's gone before, which is very exciting, because we can concentrate on making content, which is, after all, why people would buy new hardware anyway. Nobody's going to buy a box to be decorative under their television. They're going to buy a box because they want to play games on it. And that's what is easy to forget sometimes. Yeah, we, we, have a, we jokingly have the Kings's Law of Consoles, which is, it says that all the features that are pushed on the, the current generation of consoles are really only feasible on the next generation. Yes, yes. So if you think of, yeah, a PS4 Pro, well, we could do 4K, so yeah, not quite, so maybe next one. You know, 8K on the PlayStation 5 or whatever it's called, uh, I don't know. I've always really liked VR, uh, what VR can do. Uh, we, we made Battlezone, with, uh, which is a launch title for Sony's VR platform, which is very successful for us. We've got other VR titles coming along as well. We're doing a Sniper Elite VR title. I think VR is still a challenge though. Uh, and it's sort of, uh, it's intriguing. I, I just love the possibilities of VR. I also like my 2D, uh, no, my flat screen games playing because it's not 2D, it's 3D, but it's flat screen. We don't even have the language for it these days. But um, where, where are games going? Well, because the hardware is getting faster, production value and production cost is going up. So there's a challenge there. What kind of game can you make for what budget? The biggest games are going to be huge, absolutely humongous budgets. Now, I remember the first time when people were talking about $10 million games. Well, now $10 million isn't a particularly expensive game at all. $100 million games are not unusual, not for the biggest titles. Trouble is there are challenges in business plans and business uh, processes and how to get that money back. And there are a lot of big businesses struggling at the moment. They put a lot of money into their games and they're not getting as much money back as they wanted. So I think there's going to be some, uh, not struggling businesses exactly, but there's going to be some senior executives at multinationals kind of uh, contemplating how to actually get paid to do their big games. Obviously, the, the key factor of an event is to come and listen and uh, network. Um, if you can do nothing else, even if you're not particularly comfortable networking, you've sort of got to, you've got to go to an event and you've got to say to yourself, right, as uncomfortable as it might be, I'm going to have to work this room. I need to go and talk to people, even if I really don't like doing it, because you're going to meet people, they're in a similar line of work to you, they might be further along in their career or whatever. They might have tips, they might have contacts, they might go, oh, actually, you should speak to so-and-so. So, so so the networking, the sort of social net, the, the networking effect is, is, is very important at events like this. And the talks are good. You obviously need to go to talks because they can be inspiring, they can, they can sort of get your creative juices flowing, they can, they can make, you th make you think um, and will learn how other people do things. But at the end of the day, especially if you want to be in a business and want to be working as a professional, people, it's a, still a people power thing. You still need to know people.